Hello and welcome to Horse and Country TV. I'm joined again today by Edward Creamer, who's a dressage rider and yard owner. He's going to tell us a bit about bandaging today, the difference between a stable bandage and an exercise bandage. Uh, and we've got his beautiful horse Sven joining us. And on one leg, he's demonstrating a stable bandage and on the other, a exercise bandage. So Edward, can you just talk us through the difference between the two? Main difference between the two is the fact you've got to have an underlay underneath the stable bandage to take away most of the pressure uh, as would be the same if you were having a travel bandage which is again done very similar way um, and the other real difference is the fact that the bandage material itself the polo bandage you tend to have a little bit of a thicker more woolen material whereas the stable bandage you, you tend to have a little bit of a thinner um, slightly more elasticated material. And what about pressure is that important at all between the two? The pressure ideally you want to have a an oh, exercise bandage or a polo bandage, you can have it that little bit tighter. Um, but with the stable bandage, you, you've got to just maintain that there's it's not too much pressure because obviously that stable bandage will be le left on far, far longer than an exercise bandage would. And I can see on Sven that the exercise bandage doesn't come, come down quite as far on his leg as the stable bandage does. Is there a reason for that? Yes, the exercise bandage is there primarily for support and for protection. The stable bandage is there to also take away a lot of the um, strain from the leg but it's, it's mainly there to, to stop any inflammation or swelling so you, you'd put them on after a cross-country event or if the horse was prone to having swollen legs when it stayed in the stable. And it's a bit of a debate between whether to use boots or bandages uh, when you're exercising. What is your personal preference? What would you use? My personal preference is you know, it's a mixture really. When I have a young horse I prefer not to use anything because I believe they should learn how to kick themselves so they don't do it all the time. And then I'd move on to boots so that they are then protected when they become sort of a little bit older and they start working a little harder. Um, I'd only start using bandages when the work level increased so the strain on the legs um, dictates when I'd use a bandage. Uh, for example with, with my horse here he, he does passage and piaf work so I'd, I'd want to have that little bit extra support which is what the bandage provides. Okay and when somebody is putting on bandages, what um, problems might they encounter? What should we look out for to get our bandages just right? Most important thing is um, the even distrib distribution of pressure. Uh, the most important thing is when you very first start the bandage, you always lay the, the beginning of the bandage on the, the front of the bone so that as you roll the bandage down, the, the bone maintains the most pressure. Again, you don't want to put the, the first bit of the pressure on the, on the tendon because it you start off wrong already. Um, as you go down the leg you want to just unravel the bandage about halfway each time and, trying to, and always trying to come off the leg with the bandage and then wrap around the leg again. You don't want to just hold the bandage close to the leg and keep tightening it and tightening it. If you come away from the leg with the bandage then back around the leg then you can maintain the same pressure all the way down. Brilliant, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll all be practicing now and trying to get them spot on. Thank you also to Sven and that was brilliant, thank you.